Hello, my name is Ranveer Singh Dalal. In this video, today, I'm going to talk about Lost Spring, second chapter in Flamingo, class 12th English Core Textbook. It's written by Anish Chunk, a famous journalist who was born in Rao Kela. Uh, and spent her childhood and adolescence in Hyderabad. So she is a writer. Her, her parents were also writers. In addition to, to being a writer, she is also a journalist. And uh, being journalist, it is quite obvious for 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 them to to visit their surroundings their neighborhoods uh, seeking stories for their newspapers so you know as per her profession she does visit you know she observes her neighborhood looking for stories and then she finds uh, the story that has been incorporated that uh, that is given in the syllabus she wrote a book titled lost spring stories of stolen childhood and from the same book this chapter has been taken this is you know ex an, an excerpt from from that particular book uh, here she analyzes the grinding poverty and traditions which condemn children to a life some children to a life of exploitation so in this chapter she has talked about you know such children one of them belongs to Delhi the other one to Firozabad so in the first part of the story there is a story of Sahib Yala. but uh, before we start the story uh, first uh, uh, let me explain a bit uh, the title uh, of, the, of the lesson Lost Spring so you know uh, spring, as you know, is the best season in which there is greenery all around. We consider spring as the best season in a year. Similarly, childhood is considered the best stage of a human being's life. So lost spring here means lost childhood. And there are some children in our country who do not enjoy their childhood who have you know who do not see the spring of their life who do not enjoy the spring of their life means the best stage of their life childhood they do not live their childhood as they should they are child laborers so this is what the title is all about now, when the story begins, there is a conversation between the writer and sahib -e alam a boy whom she sees on occasions, now and then, in her neighborhood. Sahib, with, uh, with his friends, an army of barefoot boys, you know, who who live uh, in uh, Simapuri. Now, you know, uh, Sahib Alam with his family got settled in Simapuri in 1971 as a result of uh, a war between India and Pakistan. As a, uh, as a result of that war, uh, Bangladesh was born as, as an independent country. So in that war, as a result of that war, Sahib with his family migrated to India and now they are settled in Simapuri. That is on the outskirts of Delhi, in, in, in the periphery of Delhi. So a writer visits, a uh, writer, you know, whenever uh, she moves out of her house, and uh, she goes out looking for stories. 
in 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 her neighborhood she she looks at these uh, these boys one of them sahib e alam and one morning when she when she sees when she looks at sahib e alam and his friends there starts a conversation and there is a question put up by the writer to sahib e alam at the beginning of, of the story why do you do this why do you do this this question the writer asks when she sees that uh, sahib e alam is a rag picker you know who has a bag hung on his shoulder uh, you know picking rags you know pieces of plastics and all kind of scrap so she puts a question why do you do this and uh, then a, a little uh, uh, some lines are there in the chapter about the background background of the story as to as to why sahib and his family left their green fields in dhaka bangladesh and sahib's mother tells him that those green fields they didn't give proper food to them they didn't give grains it was it was because regular floods and storms you know their fields were swept away their harvest was lost mm-hmm. so because of that you know now they are happily or 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 uh, they are in a better position than uh, than what they were there in in their own country bangladesh dhaka now when the writer asks the question why do you do this sahib says i have nothing else to do and then writer says go to school and and she says it in a glib manner the word glibly has been used now glib is what there are you know people like educated people who who have good command on the language and they do give advice to to such people like such children or or you know sometimes beggars they do do they do have that command over language and they do speak and when they speak they are hardly serious about what they say so in a similar way in a similar manner she was you know not much serious about about the kind of situation in which sahib was but she says you know uh, when sahib uh, replies to the first question and uh, that you know i have nothing else to do when writer asks why do you do this sahib says i have nothing else to do and then writer says go to school in a glib manner without being serious sahib says there is no school in my neighborhood when the build one i will go and then writer says if i start a school will you come and again you know half joking she was not serious yes sahib says smiling broadly and uh, so this was you know how the conversation took place the first conversation between sahib and the writer now uh, on another occasion one morning you know one on one day she happens to meet him again a few days later and uh, you know he comes running up to to the writer and says is your school ready now this this question stumped the writer she was embarrassed as to why she she says you know uh, why, why she said on an earlier day that you know if i start a school will you why why she put that question to him it was a kind of promise that she didn't mean so she feels embarrassed when uh, sahib asks uh, uh, is your school ready and now being embarrassed she could say nothing other than you know it takes longer to build a school she says just that she was embarrassed and but you know feels a little guilty also but then she consoles herself feeling that you know these kind of promises are made to these kind of boys and they are not meant so this is how she consoles not you know all promises are meant uh, bleak hold these boys 
like Sahib, they live in a bleak world. They, they hardly have possibilities or prospects in their lives. So nothing new. This is what happens to them. You know. This is quite normal for them. So this is how she consoles herself. And uh, after months of knowing him, on another occasion, uh, she gets acquainted with him. And then one day she asks, what is your name now? And he says, sahib alam Now this uh, sahib alam word, writer feels, is, is quite ironical. When she looks at his, de uh, his deplorable, uh, de deplorable or miserable condition, the circumstances in which he lived, the kind of work he did, you know, she feels that the name has no relation with his reality. Sahib Alam means Lord of the Universe, the honor of the universe. And look, you know, there was no match between Sahib's reality and his name. That is why it has been called as ironical. His name was ironical. So over the months she recognized, you know, she came to recognize each of those boys from that army, Sahib Alam and his friends. Uh, so one more day like this, she asks one boy, why aren't you wearing chappals? And the other one says, uh, the, the same boy says, sorry, my mother did not bring them down, down from the shelf. So uh, other one, you know, his friend says that, that he won't wear, even if she, she gives him the chappals. And uh, the third one, you know, another boy, she looks at another one who, uh, who says that uh, I want shoes. Uh, who never owned a pair in his in his life. So this paragraph regarding shoes and chapels, this is all about you know. Uh, she had seen the writer had seen these kind of children all across the country, uh, in cities and villages, you know, being barefoot all the time. Now she wonders if 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 that is a tradition or. Or, or simple, simple poverty, deprivation, because of which they don't fear. And uh, uh, you know, one of the explanation that she that she hears from people is is that this is this is their tradition. But she has doubt believing this this explanation. She thinks, you know, she thinks that children they do like to wear. If, if they are given, they do like to wear footwear, chappals, etc. And when they say that this is not their tradition or we do not like to wear chappals and footwear, this is only an excuse. She, she thinks that this is only an excuse rather than tradition. An excuse to explain away a perpetual state of poverty. Perpetual means continuous. Continuous state of poverty in the next paragraph you know she uh, remembers a story you know a man once told him man from udp the man told him that uh, sorry the man told her that uh, uh, that in his childhood once uh, he prayed to on a pair of shoes you know he was he didn't have that luxury in his childhood 30 years back and he he prayed in front of a temple you know the the, the, the temple uh, or in which his father himself was a priest you know so the man you know when uh, earlier he was a boy so in his childhood he prayed to the god to provide him with a pair of shoes so this is how how he liked to own a pair of shoes but he couldn't 
that was 30 years back and in the present in you know the writer sees the writer uh, observes that uh, the situations the situation has changed the present priest his son right? so they have uh, different circumstances the son of the present priest he comes from the school maybe attending a private school wears uniform and socks and shoes so this is how the situation has changed over the years 30 years then she remembers another boy you know back then in past 30 years back maybe uh, when he owned a pair, you know, when he got a pair of shoes, he prayed to the God that, you know, don't make me lose that. So that, uh, that was, you know, how important for children to have shoes. So, you know, this is how the writer says that, that there is a little change in circumstances. There is a change in circumstances in the life of children like you know, the, the son of priest, but there are children. There are children like Sahib Alam who do not have this luxury. Even after you know, a passage of 30 years, even after 30 years, uh, children like Sahib Alam do not have that luxury. So, in the next paragraph, the writer uh, tells us about uh, the area, uh, Simapuri, uh, in which Sahib Alam and his family live. So, Simapuri, the area, you know, which is uh, there on the periphery of Delhi, and the writer says, Simapuri is on the periphery of Delhi, yet miles away from it. So this is a metaphorical statement. Technically, geographically, Simapuri is part of Delhi, in the outskirts of Delhi. But metaphorically, it's you know miles away from Delhi. Means that uh, it has not seen any development over the years. It has not uh, seen progress in terms of amenities, facilities. It was a wilderness back 30 years back in 1971. Same is the case in the present. The only difference is now it is populated. There are people, but in the name of facilities, there is hardly anything to feel proud of. So about 10,000 rag pickers live in Simapuri, uh, in their uh, uh, shanties made of mud, roofs of tin and tarpaulin, devoid of sewage, drainage, or running water. They have lived there for 30 long years. And what have they got? They are provided ration cards by the politicians they are given permits to live there but they do not enjoy identity self-respect and they are uh, and quite ironically they are happy with their with their circumstance with their circumstances they are, you know uh, one group of women uh, tells the writer that uh, if at the end of the day we can feed our families and go to bed without an aching stomach we would rather live here than in the fields that gave us uh, no grain so this is how we come to know about their, their, their situation they are provided ration cards and as, as a result of that they get food and food is important for them they can fill their stomachs. They don't have to sleep on empty stomachs. So they are happy. Back there, you know, in Dhaka, those fields, they, they gave nothing to them. So they are happy, in, in, in a sense we can say, uh, living here in India, in 
encima por él. And uh, wherever uh, they live in transit homes, those are those shanties, those are not their permanent homes. Wherever they find food, they pitch their tents and live there. And children grow in those tents, shanties, and children become partners in survival. And survival is what? Survival, survival is, is garbage. And children have to do the same work. They have to become, you know, they have become partners in survival. They have to work, you know, scrunching garbage, the same work that their parents do. So they are called as partners in survival. And garbage is, is gold for them. So gold here, not actual gold, just a metaphorical use of the word. So whatever they had, whatever they have, rather, if you use the term like this, whatever they have, it is all because of this garbage. The food they eat, the kind of shanties or houses they live in, the roof they, they have over their heads, over their head, the, the roof, though these roofs are leaking ones, but still, whatever they have, whatever they enjoy, whatever uh, they have, it is all because of this garbage. So that's why garbage to them is gold. It has been compared to gold. But for a child, it is more than that. For elders, it is a means of survival, their you know, means of their livelihood. But for children, garbage is more than that. It is something wrapped in wonder. Sometimes, you know, scrunching the garbage, they find a rupee note, a, a coin or 10 rupee note and, and the search never ends. They keep on scrunching for more. So this is what happens. Children, you know, they can find interest in anything for you know they live in a different world from elders so this is how how children were different from elders as far as their uh, their, their, their uh, attitude towards goal uh, towards garbage is concerned uh, then one morning uh, on another day the writer uh, meets Sahib and this time he was you know, standing outside a fenced gate outside a tennis club uh, and there some, uh, some children were playing tennis wearing you know, white, white dress, tennis you know, kit. They were in their tennis kit. So they were playing that game and Sahib Alam was you know, looking intently intently he liked the game as he say as he says to writer i like the game but you know and and he also tells the writer that uh, you know he says i go inside when no one is around the gatekeeper lets me use the swing so this is what uh, sahib tells the writer on this occasion. Uh, now writer observes Sahib's uh, feet uh, as well and uh, she is a little surprised to see that this time Sahib is wearing footwear, shoes, though they were only you know, discarded shoes. Uh, there was you know in one of them a hole, there, there was a hole in one of the, one of the shoes but still, you know, and uh, he, he was uh, wearing uh, um, discolored shirt and shorts and those shoes uh, had no match with the kind of dress he was wearing. Uh, the fact that they were discarded, you know, it, it didn't matter to him. It was like a dream come true for, for a boy 
who never wore shoes or chappals and you know owning a pair was like a dream come true and uh, he was not mindful you know he didn't mind that uh, there was you know a hole in one of them so for wearing uh, shoes was a dream come true for him but the game the tennis game which he was watching and uh, and and uh, he said that you know i like the game that game was out of his reach and uh, you know and then comes uh, the last paragraph the most important one one more more one more you know uh, another day one morning uh, when writer meets sahib he was you know a different he had a different look he had a canister you know hanging over his shoulder steel canister and he looked unhappy he was going to a milk booth to fetch milk now uh, he has he has got a job uh, now he is working under a tea stall owner and is given rupees 800 per month and uh, all the meals food but he is not happy the carefree look that he had that he uh, that was witnessed by the writer earlier on sahib sahib al sahib alam's face he now had you know he now uh, has lost that carefree look he was looking for it the the canister you know looks heavier than his bag which he which, which he was happy to carry all around canister belongs to the tea stall owner bag was his own he was happy moving here and there he enjoyed his freedom earlier so that's how now the last statement is sahib is no longer his own master so that is how you know sahib now has become become a servant working under another man tea stall owner and this is how you know this is what his destiny is this is what he finds this is all that he could get so this is how the story ends now let us discuss the question answers from the first part first question is what is sahil looking for in the garbage dumps and where is he and where has he come from so he's looking in the garbage dumps you know for some some certain things like plastic bottles uh, metal things uh, or polythene sheets which he could sell to a scrap dealer getting some some money uh, sometimes he finds a coin a rupee coin 10 rupee note something like that so he looks for 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 these kind of things a rag picker he is he scrunches garbage for for these kind of things which uh, he could sell to a scrap dealer getting some money uh, for that where is he and where has he come from he is at simapuri and he has come from dhaka in bangladesh second question what explanations does the author offer for the children not wearing footwear you know one explanation is that you know it is it is their tradition they do not like to wear footwear because it is not part of their tradition this is one explanation but the writer has some doubts believing that she wonders if it is only an excuse to explain away the perpetual state of poverty so writer takes it you know the the fact that it is their tradition writer takes it with a pinch of salt she does not believe it she has her doubts she thinks that it is only an excuse 
to hide their poverty, continuous poverty. Uh, and the third question is, is Sahib happy working at the tea stall? Explain. Sahib is, is not happy at all working at the tea stall. He has lost his carefree look. He looks worried. Uh, now, the, the steel canister that he carries on his shoulder to, to bring milk from the milk booths, the canister belongs to the tea stall owner and the bag, bag belonged to him. It was, you know, he felt lightly moving around with his bag. Earlier he was, you know, he was free to roam wherever he liked. Now, but now, you know, he has become a servant and he is no longer his own master. So basically, he is not happy working at the tea store. So those were uh, the short questions from the textbook. So this was the first part of the chapter. Sometimes I find a rupee in the garbage. In the next part of this video, I will take up the next part of the lesson. I want to drive a car. So that's it uh, in this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you found it uh, useful, don't forget to, to leave your comments and don't forget to like and subscribe to it so that you don't miss more videos. Thanks for watching.